Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the City of Muskegon City Commission meeting for February 9th, 2016. Before we begin the formal proceedings, I'd like to invite up uh, Pastor Tim Cross from Living Word Church to lead us in prayer, and that will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor? Would you bow your heads with me, please? Father, you said in your word that prayers, thanksgivings, and intercessions were to be made on behalf of all men, but especially those that are in authority. So, Father, first of all, I want to say thank you for these men and women and those that serve in leadership positions in our community. We thank you for their sacrifice. We thank you for the time that they take to serve us. But, Father, you said in your word as well that righteousness is what exalts a nation or even a city. And you said that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, they groan. So, Father God, I pray over our leaders. I know that they have many decisions and many things that come their way. But, Father, I pray righteousness, that they would awaken to what's right in your eyes and the decisions that they have to make, that, Father, that you would grant them that sense of righteousness, what you see is right. And, Father, you said if we'd awake unto righteousness, we'd not do the things that would displease you. And that, Father, as we make righteous decisions, those things that are right in your eyes, you cause a city, you cause a region, you cause an area to begin to be exalted, to come to a higher place. And, Father, that's what we would like to see in our city, that just as that slogan, watch us go, watch Muskegon go, Father, we want to see this city go up to a higher place, this community to come to a higher place. So, Father, I thank you for granting our leaders, this city commission, that sense of righteousness, what's right in your eyes. And as those righteous decisions are made in our community, we begin to see a change in our community. So, Father, I thank you for helping them. I thank you for opening their eyes and giving them a sense of what's right before you. And I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Turnquist. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Mayor Gallman. Here. Vice Mayor Hood. Here. Commissioner Warren. Here. Commissioner German. Here. Commissioner Rinsa Masipiga. Here. Thank you. Well, we have introductions. Nope. I don't see them. Who's handling uh, introductions and presentations tonight? Kathy was. Kathy, you were doing introductions. Oh. And I don't think they're here. Okay. Hey, we have the consent agenda then, please. Approval of minutes, City Clerk, summary request to approve minutes of the January 26, 2016 goal setting meeting and the January 26, 2016 regular City Commission meeting. Staff recommendation, approval of the minutes. Assessing agreement, letter of understanding, City Manager, summary request. Staff would like to continue utilizing Muskegon County Equalization as our assessor. The current agreement expires March 31, 2016, and the new agreement begins July 1, 2016. This letter of understanding will extend the current agreement to include the period of April 1, 2016 through June 30, 2016. Staff recommendation to authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the letter of understanding. Extension of Temporary Employment Services Agreement, Affirmative Action and Risk Management, summary request to approve a one-year contract extension with Alwood Staffing and Services Incorporated for temporary and seasonal employment services. The current agreement expired on December 31, 2015 and has an option for a one-year extension. A verbal agreement took place on December 4, 2015 and the company has continued recruitment efforts since the expiration. Staff recommendation to approve the agreement with Alwood Staffing Services Incorporated and authorize the city manager and city clerk to sign the agreement extension. Purchase and installation of a replacement drive for a recirculation pump, water, water filtration plant, summary request, to accept a quote from the Eaton Corporation Electrical Services and Systems Division to purchase and install a replacement drive on recycle pump number one at the water filtration plant in the amount of $14,408. Staff recommendation, authorize staff to accept the quote. 
demolition bids for city-owned dangerous buildings planning economic development. Summary request. Due to the city's active efforts to fight blight through the demolition program, the city accepted properties that did not sell at the tax work closure auction and were deemed dangerous buildings. It is requested that administration be directed to obtain bids for the demolition of the structures and the mayor and city clerk be authorized and directed to execute a contract for demolition with the lowest responsible bidder. Staff recommendation to approve the resolution and to authorize both the mayor and the city clerk to sign said resolution. 2016 Pavement Marking Program, Department of Public Works, Summary Request. Staff is requesting permission to enter into a one-year contractual agreement with the Michigan Pavement Marking of Wyoming, Michigan for center line painting and advanced pavement marking of West Olive, Michigan for special pavement markings. This contract bid was awarded by the Muskegon County Road Commission and for local agencies, the Muskegon County Pavement Marking Group to enter into with WPM and APM with each member billed separately by MPM and APM for painting services requested. Staff recommendation approved the request to enter into a one-year contract with Michigan Pavement Markings for centerline painting and advanced pavement markings for special pavement markings. Second quarter 2015-2016 budget reforecast finance. Summary request. At this time, staff is transmitting the second quarter 2015-2016 budget reforecast, which outlines proposed changes to the budget that have come about as a result of changes in revenue projections, policy priorities, labor contracts, updated economic conditions, or other factors. Staff recommendation, approval. Adoption of no reason absentee resolution, city clerk. Summary request. To adopt a resolution supporting no reason absentee voting being allowed in the city of uh, or, I'm sorry, the state of Michigan. Staff recommendation: adopt the resolution. Adoption of resolution in opposition of Public Act 269 of 2015. City Clerk. Summary request: to adopt a resolution in opposition of Public Act 269 of 2015. Staff recommendation: adoption of the resolution. Thank you. Commissioners, you've heard the consent agenda as presented. Are there any items you wish to have removed for further consideration? Commissioner and Ms. Avinga? Item G. Which one was it again? G. G. As in, in Gowran. Gowran, yeah. yes. <laughs> item I. It's here. And item I. Any others? Commissioner Johnson. Seeing no others, I move to approve the consent agenda as red minus items G as in Dalrin and I as in Irene. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Johnson, seconded by Commissioner German to accept the consent agenda as presented minus item G and item I. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Mayor Gowran. Yes. Vice Mayor Hood. Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Ritz-Pacifica? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item G. Commissioner ritz saving us. Sure. I move to approve the uh, second quarter 2015-16 budget reforecast as presented. Second. It's been sec uh, moved by Commissioner ritz saving seconded by Commissioner German. Two approve the second quarter 2015-2016 budget reforecast. Commissioner? Yes. Uh, um, Mr. Smith, I believe, is going to give us a presentation. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I know at the work session last night uh, we discussed some of the details of the um, budget reforecast for the second quarter. But one item that uh, we had some discussion on last night um, that we want to make uh, an, an amendment to, if you will, to the reforecast that's presented in the packet is to add uh, uh, $435,000 in expenditures towards property acquisitions uh, in regards to the High Point Flats property, if you will, the property bounded by Clay, um, uh, Jefferson, Western, and First Street. Is that for the general fund then? No, the, um, public the intent is to use the um, uh, actually use money from the uh, public improvement fund towards that acquisition. Any other questions for Mr. Smith while he's up here? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item? That roll call, please. Mayor Galbraith. Yes. Vice Mayor Hood. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Yes. Commissioner German. 
Yes. Commissioner Rinson Masiviga? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item I, Commissioner German? Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, I move for the adoption of resolution in opposition of Public Act 269 of 2015. Court. It's been moved by Commissioner German, supported by Commissioner Johnson, to adopt a resolution in opposition of Public Act 269 of 2015. Commissioner German. Okay, I know we had some discussion on this yesterday, and I just want to get uh, actually uh, clarification that we're all on the same page, uh, and we're talking about the uh, section where the uh, legislator has implemented that gag order, correct? And exactly what is it that we want to um, see out of this now? To, to eliminate that, or and we're actually what repealing this, correct? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm, yeah. Do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Ann or myself? Oh, no. We, we go, go ahead, start out, Ann. Uh, uh, yeah, the intent was to uh, express our, our um, concern to the legislature and let them know that we are in opposition of, of that bill, or actually the law now. And since then, there has been an injunction put on there. Uh, mm -hmm. So at this time, it's not in place, but. Right. But by opposing this, um, may have some influence on what could happen and possibly change that legislation. So That's what we're hoping for. Exactly. Okay. All right. So just so everyone knows what we're right. actually voting for and on the same page, I think that makes sense. Right. Okay. A number of individuals through different organizations have been putting in opposition as well yeah. uh, by signing on to action <coughs> from uh, agencies like MML and, and All others right. throughout the entire process. So. Commissioner Johnson? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, this resolution here was put forward by the Michigan Municipal League mm -hmm. asking members to pass a resolution in opposition to um, specifically Section 57, Subsection 3 of that Senate Bill 571, which is now Public Act 269. Mm -hmm. um, and that is specifically with regard to what is known as the gag order that has been put in place. Um, one thing to note, we talked yesterday about removing a separate section. Um, then that was section 54, subsection 3, um, with regard to um, PAC contributions. Um, I noticed that the, there's still a therefore be it resolved in here. Um, so just to make sure that that's not in the final resolution, um, I would move to amend this resolution and remove um, the now therefore be it resolved that the city commission of the city of Muskegon calls on the state legislature and governor to resolve the aforementioned double standard either repealing the language of section 54 subsection 3 of PA 269 of 2015 or similarly prohibit payroll deductions from being used to fund a corporation's home pack. Support. Support to that amendment. Very good. Um, we vote on the amendment. Yes, please. Uh, it has been moved by Commissioner Johnson, uh, seconded by Commissioner Elizabeth Sabanga, to remove uh, reference and now therefore be it resolved regarding Section 54, Subsection 3 of PA 269, regarding uh, or referencing it as a, a double standard. Any discussion on the motion on the amendment? Roll call, please. Commissioner Warren. Oh, excuse excuse okay. me one second. Yes. Okay, I did see something um, in this also. They talked about. Um, I think we need to oh, vote do we, on the amendment. Yeah. Unless it, I, I, it, it has to do with that. With that. I, okay, right, right. Okay, not in discussion. addition to. Okay, right, cool. right. Uh, the question was the um, bill talked about also using uh, tax dollars also. So will that be part of this also? Uh, to prohibit that, or will that stay as part of that um, legislation? If we, uh, that's not with regard to this amendment. No, oh, 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 oh yeah. uh, but it, was, uh, it wasn't in this way. I believe he was talking about the PAC. Um, right. no, that he spoke about yeah. yesterday. It's not here. Are you referring yeah. to using uh, public dollars for informing citizens? Is, is, uh, okay. Okay. Exactly. Okay. I thought that's that was part of this. With regard to the gap order. Okay. Uh, yeah, I thought that. And that'd be all part of. Okay. Hopefully overturning all this. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Roll call on the amendment, please. Commissioner Warren. Yes. Commissioner German. Yes. Commissioner Rinsma Sibiga. Yes. Commissioner Turnquist. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Mayor Galrin. Yes. Vice Mayor Hood. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. 
Is there any further discussion on PA 269 of 2015 now that we've uh, removed reference to section 54, subsection 3 of PA 269? Uh, Commissioner. I just want to clarify, because um, I think uh, Commissioner German's um, question uh, warrants some uh, additional clarification on that. Because uh, with this resolution, what we're asking to repeal is inclusive of that, is the ban on being able to use um, public funds to just inform um, citizens in a neutral manner without explicitly saying oppose or support a particular local um, ballot initiative. Uh, and so it would revert to the previous law, which would allow us to expend resources simply to inform, not to sway. Um, so therefore, we could, uh, like, for instance, um, under this current law, um, we would not be able to print out those um, informational packets that we distributed to our neighborhood associations. I brought them to neighborhood associations and discussed um, the road millage that we had on there. Under um, the current law, that would not be allowed. Um, under current law, we couldn't even, within 60 days, send out a mailer saying, um, here's a ballot, this is gonna be voted on this date, and this is what's in it. Um, and so we were just asking to return to the previous law, um, which does have restrictions on public funding trying to sway a ballot measure. Um, and that had been in, in the books for many years and was enforceable. Um, so I just wanted to, to clarify on that. Thank you. Anything else? Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Hood? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Rinsa Masipiga? <laughs> yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Mayor Galrin? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. New business item A, please. Concurrence with the Housing Board of Appeals notice in order to demolish the following public safety. 1302 Sanford Street, 340 West Southern. Summary request. This is to request that the City concur, uh, Commission concur with the findings of the Housing Board of Appeals that the structures are unsafe, substandard, a public nuisance, and that they be demolished within 30 days or infraction tickets may be issued. It is further requested that the administration be directed to obtain bids for the demolition of the structures and that the mayor and city clerk be authorized and directed to execute a contract for demolition with the lowest responsible bidder or staff may issue infraction tickets to the owner, agent, or responsible party if they do not demolish a structure. Staff recommendation to concur with the Housing Board of Appeals decision to demolish. Thank you. Uh, Councilor, you're here on 1302 Sanford, correct? Yes. Okay. And before we get going, then we'll, uh, is there anybody here on 340 West Southern? If not, could we move on that first, Commissioner Rinsma saving? Go. I move that we concur with the Housing Board of Appeals notice in order to demolish 340 West Southern. Second. It's been moved by <coughs> Commissioner Rinsma saving us, seconded by Vice Mayor Hood to concur with the Housing Board of Appeals decision to demolish 340 West Southern. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Ritzma-Sibiga? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Mayor Gallman? Yes. Vice Mayor Hood? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. So we can begin um, discussion. Can we get a motion on 1302 Sanford, please? Commissioner German? Uh, concurrent, I move to concurrence with the Housing Board of Appeal notice in order to demolish the following. Uh, 1302 Sanford Street. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner German, seconded by Commissioner Rinsma Savinga to concur with the Housing Board of Appeals to demolish 1302 Sanford Street. Can we start out with the staff report on this, please? Sure. Evening, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. Evening, Chief. Um, to start out, first of all, this um, particular house, 1302 Sanford, is in what we call our gateway area. Back in 2014, that area, which is right across from the high school, was in our, we called our targeted blight area. That's how the house was identified and then actually placed on the list to go to the Housing Board of Appeals. The first notice was sent on or about um, the end of March of 2015. And then from that point, it, we see an owner change and we see this start marching through the process. In April, um, it was, uh, there was a determination through the Housing Board of Appeals with that owner, and then went on to the uh, Housing Board of Appeals in May. It was tabled in May with certain guidelines um, 
They were, they were returned unclaimed, timeline given, till 8-18-2015 to be completed. This went on, so on and so forth. And in October, once again, um, it was back at the HBA, tape or, uh, the HBA meeting again. There was a determination made, tabled with guidelines for this owner, uh, Ram um, Mashara. He signed the order on in November of 2415. This went on and on again through December. And then in January, it was back at the Housing Board of Appeals again. And um, it was determined at that time to uh, demolish and then forward to the um, city commission. Um, the basic um, value of the home is approximately, SEV is $17,000. And safe built um, claims that the repairs um, are around fifty thousand dollars to fix this home. And just so you know, work has continued on and off through this last nine months, whether or not they had a permit. Um, they were hit and miss with the Housing Board of Appeals. Like I said, you can see how many times this came to the Housing Board of Appeals, was tabled, given instructions and timelines, and again and again, um, they did not follow. Um, those simple instructions, and then it wound up back at the Housing Board of Appeals. That's the staff report this time. <coughs> Can you have any questions? Any questions for Chief? Can you repeat when the process started? Did you say summer 2015? Is that what? No, it started in March of 2015. March, okay. But the home was identified um, in late 2014 okay. simply because it was on one of our gateways across from our high school and our goal was to identify those properties and clean those up simply because so many um, visitors come to our, our uh, football games that was a targeted area mm -hmm. anything else for chief at this moment yeah uh, vice mayor <coughs> chief um have uh you or anyone from inspection noticed uh, repairs that have been done claims have been done Yes, and like I said, there has been uh, multiple repairs done to the home. It continues on. Basically, when we had the guidelines and the timelines and so on and so forth, work had gone on, but it was not under the management or auspice of Safe Build. But we do know what's gone on. We knew we do know they put in. We can't determine how much money they put into it, but they have put money into it. So I guess I'm going to kind of like cut the corner on this one. If and I guess they have representation here tonight. So basically, as I always say. Um, like we did last week, a home went into superintendent control, and then the representation for the owner and then our city attorney worked out the, guy, the actual timelines, and then um, an escrow fund was put in place to assure that, that would occur in the timelines agreed upon. Just in case it wasn't met, the city, of course, would have an escrow fund to actually proceed with the demolition if, in fact, they did not meet the timelines um, established by the representative and um, our city attorney. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Just had a quick question. Um, okay, because I'm familiar with that property. I've yes. seen um, the property on uh, Sanford, and I can remember what it looked like before the improvement. And um, I don't know the actual owner. I don't even know if he's in the audience here. But um, I've seen them work on that property and made some significant improvement. Now, um, did I? He, if I heard you correctly, did you say they was actually working on it without a permit or some work there, was done there was, there the was time expired yeah they were working on it um i guess um when the housing board of appeals gave them instructions mm -hmm. to give information to kirk so kirk could supervise this that didn't occur and there again one of the meetings that they came to we noticed um, that they had painted the house mm -hmm. but they were actually supposed they had never met with um Mr. Briggs and mm -hmm. work this out. Mm -hmm. So we were seeing improvements, just like you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with you. I mean, it looks much better. Mm -hmm. And that's why um, they just didn't respond to the Housing Board of Appeals and those requests. But yet, a lot of improvements were made. So I say that we get them back on the line, get those permits, make sure it's all to code, set a definite timeline. And I think we can secure that by an escrow fund, as we did just in the last week or two at 619 Amnity, where the owner being serious about rehabbing a home right. um, worked out the guidelines with our attorney, his representation, and they actually put down an escrow fund satisfactory to all parties. And I'm pretty certain that one, like this, would be accomplished if it went into superintendent control and there was a court order filed. Right, right. I, I think okay. that would happen. Thank you. I have another question, please. Um, can you speak to how many homes were identified in that gateway target blight area that you're describing? 
um, how many have already come down and how many are on the docket just as a point of reference okay I'm gonna guess but we have actually targeted some in those in that direct area and taken them down mm -hmm. um, but there again um, then there's several that were they tried to, to rehabilitate um, and they're, they're older homes they're hard you know and um, but it's not just that street mm -hmm. this area goes deep into Nelson neighborhood there's 11 block area we're working on if this happens to be one of the gateways by the high school that's how it got identified mm -hmm. but even in like the last month we've taken down six homes in our blighted areas mm -hmm. and one though was rescued by the superintendent control and we're certain now that that's going to be either rehabilitated or um, moved to a different location and rehab there so we're happy with that so I guess one out of seven isn't bad thank you All right. yes uh, just for um, reference and review when we get this far within uh, the the process it's it's not without uh, reason and uh, typically I'm very uh, hesitant ever not to uh, go with the uh, recommendation from the Housing Board of Appeals especially I would think in this matter um, after four appearances um, it's uh, been through the process um, quite a bit uh, Commissioner you, you you sit on Housing Board of Appeals so you're you're quite familiar however um, we like to see houses saved so we do have the potential for this writ of superintendent control which encourages those individuals those owners the people involved in these projects it's basically putting your money where your project needs it to be and it's an incent it incentivizes them to go forward and if not they, they lose that 5,000 um, and we take it down um, we would go ahead and vote and concur which keeps the process going but the writ allows things to you know go into suspended animation while these agreements are made between parties being the property owner or their represent along with the representative with the, you know our staff and uh, hopefully we get a good product at the end of the day uh, there are real dangers if we uh, don't uh, concur and uh, put these incentives in place because we could end up with uh, dead buildings and having to go through the process uh, year upon year uh, the same thing over and over again so that's uh, just a, a illustration but at this time uh, council uh, uh, bearing would you like to speak on yes. this particular you you certainly may sir and uh, if you would just just give your uh, name and your address and uh, We'd certainly like to take your comments. Um, thank you. Uh, dear esteemed members of the City Commission, uh, City Attorney uh, John Schreier and the Police Chief, uh, my name is Attorney Gary Durant. I've been an attorney in uh, Muskegon for 35 years, grew up in Muskegon. Graduated from Western Michigan Christian High School, where Matthew to Bragg, I was a state champion of hurdles two years in a row. Probably better known for that than being an attorney, but uh, <laughs> in any event, uh, the joke is when I get my rent check from the front, uh, uh, I always say there should be a deed in here. I've been paying on this for 35 years, this office, but they always laugh. But there's never no deed in there, of course. <coughs> in any event, um, I have uh, my office address, by the way, is uh, Office 307 of the front, uh, 425 West Western. I have the pre privilege and the ple pleasure of representing Mr. Uh, Ram Shandra Mishra, or Ram as his friends call him. Uh, Ram, could you just stand briefly so they know who you are? Good evening, sir. Um, okay. um, also present is his um, contractor, uh, Mr. Clay Clayton Ray Schneider. He's also present today. He's on crutches right now. I'm not going to ask him to stand, but could you raise your arm, please? Thank you. Good evening. Um, my client and his contractor did meet with your building inspector yesterday, uh, Mr. Kirk Briggs, uh, at the property in question. Um, I've also talked to uh, Mr. Kirk Briggs myself and your city attorney, John Schreier. Uh, Mr. Briggs told me he was up originally planning on being here today, but he couldn't, so he's going to send over the police chief and his staff. Uh, it's my understanding that they were going to, that he's going to recommend through the police chief a six-month extension for these repairs to be done, uh, and the usual that there be a writ of superintendent control and that a $10,000 bond. 
be required to be posted. Uh, Mr. Briggs indicated that he talked to my, our contractor. He's convinced that Mr. Ray Schneider is the real deal, that Mr. Ray Schneider knows his stuff. Uh, Kirk indicated to me that he felt that um, Mr. Ray Schneider would ride herd on the subcontractors to get this done in six months, that he was confident that he was the right contractor for the job. So um, I would, you know, my client is serious enough about this. Of course, you're serious if you hire an attorney and you hire a new contractor. I don't know how more serious you can be about that than um, trying to save this property. So um, he's put a lot of money into this already. Um, he doesn't want to lose his property. He wants to fix it up and preserve it. Um, he's serious about this. So hopefully we, you will give him that extension. Um, if possible, with regard to the bond, um, if he could post the bond in two payments, 5,000 in 21 days. I didn't talk to John about this bond. 5,000 in 21 days. The other 5,000 in another 21 days, uh, that would help him out uh, immensely. I did give you a handout. I don't know if you've all had an opportunity to read that in depth. Um, the only reason there's page two attached twice is it got chopped off and it was emailed to me. And so um, the contractor's signature was not on the original page two, so that's why we attached it, because his signature showing he's signing on to doing this is on um, the third page. So um, we're certainly available for questions, myself, my client Ram, or the uh, contractor, Mr. Ray Schneider. But we, we urge this um, commission to uh, give us the extension. Thank you. So um, you had, uh had contact with um, our inspection staff. You've had uh, contact with council this right. evening at right. this point. So, and as I'm interpreting what you're saying, you'd be prepared to uh, put up the five thousand dollars and go th through with the writ of superintendent control. Yes. Is it only going to be five thousand yeah. and not ten? It's ten thousand. Oh, sorry. okay. All right. Yeah. Rats. Ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Inflation. Yes. Okay. I mean, but like I said, if he could, he would like an additional if you could do it in two payments instead of one that would help them out so, so um, what uh, what you'll do then um, after the vote uh, make sure you uh, get in contact with uh, staff okay. and let's start that process and right. we'll get you uh, a walk through and uh, talk out the money issues All and right. that and as long as the agreed upon time frames and uh, the uh, process is followed, then we should have a fixed up house on Sandwich Street. All right, thank you. Okay. I know you got to vote on it yet, yeah, but. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, any, any questions? Or? Just, just one question also. Okay. Sure. Now, now um, with the agreement, the superintendent agreement, that's going to give him an additional six months? Is that no, what, the, what it will do is it. Um, it will give him a reasonable or an agreed upon amount of time that between the owner, his contractor, safe built, they're going to sit down, cash out a reasonable time frame for completion and make sure, uh, you know, it's done. And I know that uh, staff and safe built do a bang up job with looking at realities and working with people to make sure that the projects are. Can I make one comment in sure. regard to Mr. German's question? Um, Kurt Breds did indicate um, uh, and did point out to me that if we had six months, that would be before football season. So when the, by the time that people are parking their cars in front of, you know, Big Red Stadium, uh, this should hopefully be looking pretty again. Okay. So you're saying the project will be completed this year, basically? And six months would be before football season. Yes. Okay. Season. Just want right. to make sure. Okay. Yeah, that's my understanding. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Council. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Roll call, please. I have a question before we roll call. Yes. Because that's still new. So it sounds like I'm taking hints that we're all, or a lot of us are in favor of the extension. So does that mean we do concur or we don't? No, we, we will concur. Okay. And, and that that's where the writ it. of superintendent control okay. comes in in order to put that into a state of suspended animation. Okay. Because this says concur means demolish, so I just wanted to make yes. sure. Mm -hmm. You're right. It does. Okay. So it's out there. It, if, 
if the timelines are not met, then it doesn't come back here. Okay. And then it's demolished. Okay. okay. Thank you for explaining. You got it. Mr. Ken. Uh, and just to clarify as well, so um, we concur. It's going to be uh, they're going to be suing for a superintendent control, um, and our attorney is going to be working with them and hammering out an agreement um, that everyone agrees to um, with a set timeline um, and plan for financing it. And we're going to be our attorney's going to be working on setting up that payment plan. Um, yep. And that's not, not going to be problematic. Um, it sounds like his attorney and everyone's been working um, on this um, proactively um, with you and with Kirk Briggs, um, which uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mishra, um, for um, working to save this home um, and putting the money into um, investing it. Um, and um, hopefully uh, we'll have a new resident um, in time for our football season. Uh, you can catch a big red game. So uh, thank you. One of the things. And, I, and I'd like to commend um, uh, the owner of the resident as well because I've actually seen them out there working tirelessly on this project. I know with the weather and sometimes you may can't get to um, you know certain things or but I can honestly say that I've actually seen them out there working it and improved that property and I think it would be a great access to the community as well. So thank you. Just make sure you do it with permits. Exactly. Roll call, please. Commissioner Rizamasipiga? Yes. Commissioner Turquist? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Mayor Galrin? Yes. Vice Mayor Hood? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Any other business commissioners? Do we want to compare uh, bruises from uh, Friday night? <laughs> oh, we had a great time at the. Uh, uh, City family uh, party at Elsie Walker Arena. And thank you, uh, commission members and staff members that uh, went out and played bubble ball. And uh, it was a gangbuster time. Uh, Facebook is really uh, uh, lighting up with uh, a video they, they did of some of us participants. So it's always good for us to get out there and uh, promote uh, the town. Anything else, commissioners? Are there any members of the public that would like to address the commission? Yes, there is. Uh, Sean Mullally, are you in the house? Come on up. Hi, Sean. Just need your uh, address, and then I'll start counting in blocks of 60 for your three minutes. All right. Uh, Sean Mullally, 850 Victor. And um, good evening. I wanted to come and speak with you tonight about something that um, some of you might be aware of, and yep. that is the pending legislation that would be amending the 1970 Historic Districts Act. This is um, one of the gems of this city here, is the stock of historic homes, and I know some of you live in those historic communities, and you certainly all represent them, and it's something that some of the surrounding areas don't necessarily have. And another great thing is the city has been very proactive in efforts to protect these homes with the historic districts. What this potential change in the legislation does, I think, puts a lot of that at risk. Several of the changes, a few are the need for a two-thirds majority vote of property owners to enact historic districts. And then if you achieve that super majority, then followed by a vote of the entire city sets the bar really high for establishing this sort of protection in the future, as well as uh, sunset provision is another very problematic one. Every 10 years, you'd have to reset the process all over again from scratch. So people keep having to vote on things they've already voted on over and over again just to keep them in place. I think this is a big, big concern. It should be for the city. It's definitely a big concern for me as a lover of old houses. It has the potential to cost the city a lot of money, having all these public hearings and, and repeated votes on things. And I wanted to come and voice my opposition to this legislation here tonight, and I would encourage the commission to do the same, as well as members of the public. Thank you. Thank you. And there is an article in MLive this evening that uh, outlines some of it, and it has been in the uh, uh, media as of late. So there's uh, good references out there. Regarding it. Thank you, Sean. 
Mr. Charles Nash. Good evening, Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor Garwin and uh, Vice Mayor and all the city commissioners. I came down, as you know, typically we uh, go through our annual or biannual uh, directories from the county clerk. So uh, Clerk Waters was so kind to make sure, I know the announcement got out in the media, and uh, she made sure all the commissioners were able to get a set of these so that they can take them out to their districts and make sure that our city officials knew about this. So I wanted to make sure that we got over hot off the press, the new directories, if you don't mind passing them down. And these directories also will be on the, um, the website um, for the community. So if you have community constituents or anyone of that sort that may be wanting to be able to see those directories, you can see those. And she did inform me that the updates will now be coming on the website too. So if there's changes and there's updates, those things will be fortified on the website. So um, I just think she does a great job when she does these. Uh, they look better and better each year. She makes sure she gets uh, everything listed. She hardly ever makes a mistake on those. And uh, she's added more color and color every time we go around. <laughs> I also wanted to um, early inform you, but you're gonna get a formal message from the county and, uh, and I'm also bringing you greetings from the county because I know I saw some of you all at the, the prayer vigil the other day and I'm hoping that we all continue to keep working together and uh, did get a letter that they're gonna continue to have more events and try to bring us together and offer prayer for all the commission and leaderships. But um, we've been working with Mr. Muhammad, which thank you for your help in trying to help schedule this with our um, grant writer but I don't know if you all know about the quality of life millage that we have yes. for downtown. Well, that is coming up. So what we're trying to do is get this into a community discussion, a community event. And so what they wanted to do is those that have certain areas and, you know, because I have the biggest portion of the city, we wanted to make sure we schedule the city meeting down here. And thanks to uh, Mr. Muhammad, we're going to have that meeting. And you'll get a formal uh, invite on this, but it's March 1st, I believe, at 7 o'clock. And it's going to be at the city fire station. Am I correct with that? Yes. So um, March 1st, we're looking to have that. So I want you to make sure you talk to your neighborhood associations, your leaders, and, you know, community people that are very interested in this because it's, I mean, it's coming out of everyone's pocket. But we want we wanted to make sure that we're doing what we need to do for the community and, and moving forward with this. And so there's a lot on the table. And, you know, everybody wants funding for this and funding for that. But this is a quality of life millage that's for the community, and I think we did a good Sorry, job with what sure we did for it last that. time, but we're hoping to continue to do that uh, with this one coming up. So um, it's been a lot out there, a lot on our plate, but we want to hear the voices of the people to make sure before we vote we've got the right message. Okay. Any questions or concerns for, regarding that? Thank you. Appreciate Thank you very it. much. Thanks for having me up. Thank you. And if you run into uh, Madam Clerk Walters before I do Please give her my regards. Thank you. Appreciate that. It's always a pleasure seeing you. Is there any other members of the public that would like to address the commission? If not, Vice Mayor, take us home. There's nothing else. I move to adjourn. Support. It's been moved by the Vice Mayor, supported by Commissioner Renzema, saving uh, to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Is there any opposition out there? If not, <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you all.